welcoming back to MSD Learning World. So before going to the content of this video, let us have a practical question. So if somebody is asking you, which one is more useful, whether using a raincoat or umbrella or a jargon during a heavy rainfall. So what would be your answer? Each one, even though each one is serving a same purpose, each one has its own usage based on the uh, place where you are and the type of the rainfall and the location and the way how you are traveling. So, for example, when you are going in a two-wheeler, you cannot uh, uh, use an umbrella. So, each one of us have its own application and its own efficiency. Even the same question is putting to you in a term of a programming language. So, if you have a question like, which one is more for powerful, uh, a control structure, whether a while loop or a for, or do while. So each loop can be replaced by another. The for loop can also be represented by while loop as well as the same can be represented by the do while. But however, all these control structures have its own application and its, and its own usage based on the place where you are using, based on the program or based on the application that you are going to design. So similarly, we have one ambiguous such type of question as which is more powerful among the machines whether it is a deterministic automata or non-deterministic finite automata or non-deterministic finite automata with epsilon transition. So for this question we cannot blindly answer that the DFA is more powerful or NFA is more powerful or NFA epsilon is more powerful. So the entire uh, content of this video that I am going to share with you is my own point of view after going through several uh, books of automata theory and after browsing through several websites. So here I am not going to tell you that this machine is powerful. Here I am going to consider the efficiency and the powerful of the machine based on several properties because each of the machine has its own efficiency at the time of the application way this machine is going to be utilized. So let us see each one of the property under each property which machine is more powerful. Coming to the property number one when we take design here the design is fully based on user point of view. If you are asked if you are asked to design a machine for some uh, constraints as from the user point of view the user can easily design an automata for any regular expression that is the NFA epsilon. User can easily create NFA epsilon because the user can have any number of epsilon transitions and they can have any number of one or uh, two or more transition for each input symbol. They can have any number of final states and they can design it. Similarly, the uh, user can create NFA machines also very easily. They can have, it does not need the, to have a transition for each of the input symbols for each of the states. So the user can easily create NFA and NFA epsilon. So from user point of view and the, by designing the machine, the NFA epsilon and the NFA is more powerful than DFA. Why DFA is not powerful while designing? Because DFA is uh, creating or designing a DFA is a very difficult process. For a simple set of things, it is easy for the user to create. But when you have a more constraints on the creating or designing the finite automata, you have to keenly process the transition for each and every state. So designing the DFA is a very tedious process when compared to NFA and NFA epsilon. So designing part NFA and epsilon and NFA is more powerful than DFA. Now coming to the computation point of view, this is purely a system point of view. Because system is going to perform the computation of the machines. So from the system point of view, while you are considering the computation property, DFA is much faster because it will have a very less number of states and all the transitions are going to be very deterministic and the machine is not going to face any ambiguous situations while it is making a transitions for any of the input symbols. So 
from the system point of view, from the computation point of view, the deterministic finite automata is more powerful than NFA and NFA epsilon because the NFA and NFA epsilon machines will have more number of states. At runtime, during dynamically, the machine will have more number of transitions to any of the states. And during execution, the non-deterministic finite automata and non-deterministic finite automata with epsilon transitions will be performing thread executions that makes computation to be very tedious process. As the number of states and the number of transitions and the epsilon transitions are more in your NFA and NFA epsilon, from the computation point of view, the deterministic finite automata is more powerful than NFA and NFA epsilon. Now coming to the third property, which is a storage. So memory, memory is a very important factor to differentiate the efficiency of any, um, any machines. So coming to the storage, the DFA is more powerful because the number of state is very less and you will not have more number of transitions. So the usage of the storage based on the number of states and the transition is going to be very less in your DFA. Whereas in your NFA and NFA epsilon, you need a more number of storage for storing so many number of states as well as there will be more number of transitions to any number of states. So the storage is going to be higher when compared to DFA and NFA, epsilon and the NFA. So DFA is going to be more powerful in terms of storage. Now coming to the property of conversion, when you, when you use this uh, conversion procedure, when we take NFA epsilon, NFA epsilon is the highest mission, where DFA is the very lowest mission. DFA is uh, the subset of NFA and NFA is the subset of NFA epsilon. So whenever you have a, you have a processor with the NFA epsilon mission, and if you need any type of machines like NFA or DFA, you can just convert the NFA Epsilon machine to either NFA or DFA. But converting a DFA machine to NFA Epsilon or NFA is not possible. So when we, con when we consider the conversion process, the NFA Epsilon is more powerful than NFA and DFA. However, NFA can be converted to DFA. NFA epsilon is more powerful because any machines you can be you can be used when you have NFA epsilon machine. So for conversion, NFA epsilon is more powerful than NFA and DFA. Coming to a security property, so security. Coming to the security one, the DFA is more powerful because the machine is so deterministic. It has only a single transition, and the machine reaches the final state from the initial state only after getting the input symbol from the user. Without getting an input symbol, the machine will never move to any other states. Without getting a correct keyword or a correct token, the machine does not reach the final state. And the machine does not have any non-deterministic property also. So any stuck of the machine in between is not that much possible when compared to NF and NF epsilon. So, when compared to security, DFA is more powerful than NFA and NFA epsilon. Because in your NFA and NFA epsilon, in NFA epsilon, even without giving the input, the machine will be moving to the next frequent states and even without input, it may reach your final state where the hackers can easily get the information when your application is having an NFA epsilon. So, security point of view, DFA is more powerful than NFA and NFA epsilon. Coming to reusability, so the reusability is a, is a very important application when you want to make a software version, versioning of any application, the reusability concept is much essential. So whenever we are coming to a reusability property, the NFA epsilon is more powerful in reusability because it is easy for uh, creating any other automata from NFA epsilon by creating you can reuse the same states to have any number of transition for the each input for the same input symbol whereas in your DFA you cannot extend the DFA machine to have uh, to have any any more transition to any states because you can have only a single transition for the single input symbol so the extension or the reusability of the DFA machine is less compared to the NFA and NFA epsilon so coming to the reusability 
NFA and the NFA epsilon is more powerful than that of the DFA. Coming to the real time applications of these machines, each one has its this has its different applications based on the application and the uh, and the location you are using the application. Each one is more efficient. So when we take a real time application, we cannot tell that DFA is more powerful or NFA is more powerful or NFA epsilon is more powerful. So based on the application we use, we can use any type of machines. For example, where will you use DFA machines? Whenever you are creating any application for a secured application, for example, when you are creating an intranet application for a financial institution, uh, where each, and you, each user will have its own uh, uh, keyword to uh, login credentials. So in that type of application, you need to have a deterministic finite automata to make authentication. So whenever you are creating any secured uh, websites, you go for creating deterministic finite automata. So each one for a, for so for any secured applications, you uh, you can use DFA machine. Coming to NFA machine, whenever you want to process uh, uh, process more number of transition for a single input, you can go for NFA machine. For example, suppose uh, when you create a, a message messaging service that is a single message service in any mobile uh, uh, mobile service applications uh, if you want to forward any single messages to several users with a single input that say single input has to be passed to many number of users then you go for creating NFA epsilon machine so whenever you want to make many transitions so many transitions for mobile applications you go, you can go for using your uh, uh, NFA machines and coming to NFA epsilons, so where uh, this NFA epsilon will be more efficient. So without giving any user input, if you want to process the applications, whenever you want to, uh, whenever you want to create any Wi-Fi creations uh, for modem applications and for uh, website applications, uh, even without whether the user is uh, logging with the Wi-Fi or not. Uh, once the machine is on, all the users will be continuously getting the packets to be sent and received from that uh, node. So even without giving the input, the Wi-Fi has to be processed. So for such type of applications, you can go for creating. So for any network applications uh, where the machines are uh, connected, uh, whether the users are using the machine or not, whether the user, or user is giving the input or not, the machine has to process its application. So for such type of applications, we can go for using NFA Epsilon. So uh, when you compare the real-time application, each machine will be useful based on the application you use. I think you clearly understood the, the powerfulness of the each and every machines. So if you have any queries and if you have any points to discuss, you can just comment me on the channel. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you.